Mr. Felix Leung from the University of Queensland is now going to discuss the effect of low back pain and lower limb injuries on the piriformis muscle in elite fo football players. So this was my honours project findings. Uh, the study we looked at the effect of low back pain and low limb injuries on the piriformis muscle size in AFL players. Just like to acknowledge those people above for supervising um, my honours project. So just a bit of background into injury in AFL. Now it, it reports the highest rate of non-contact soft tissue injuries compared to other sports such as rugby league and rugby union. And amongst that, hamstring injuries are the most prevalent. Low back pain is also commonly reported in sports with repetitive rotation, flexion and extension. And over the last 11 years, the annual AFL injury report highlights the prominent incidences and prevalence of trunk and back injuries. So previously, it's thought that the large ballistic action of a drop punt kick in AFL was the cause of um, many of these injuries. However, more recently, the focus has been shifted towards the lumbopelvic region and um, the role it plays in providing for the stability of the low limb and for efficient biomechanical function. And more recent research has also looked at muscle changes and whether there's um, a need to adapt as the task increases in difficulty and um, specificity. So if we look at it from um, this perspective, the hip joint is the main link between the lumbopelvic region and the lower limb. And for a pelvic musculature to provide stability in this region, it needs to control movement in a um, number of planes. The piriformis muscle here controls external rotation when in extension and abduction when in 90 degrees flexion. So the aim of our um, study was to look at the size and symmetry of the piriformis muscle using MRI in 46 elite AFL players. So we looked at that at the start of the season and at the end of the season. What we also did was looked at um, whether they had low back pain and lower limb injuries and see if there's any um, relationships between that. Now, to, how we obtained the injury data, we used two sources. One was um, from a questionnaire, looking at well, self-report questionnaire, whether they had low back pain or whether they reported an injury. And the other was from the club's injury records, um, recorded as training sessions missed or games missed, and whether they sustained a low limb injury or no low limb injury. So what we found was that the piriformis size increased about 8.6% um, from the start to the end of the season, and that there was a trend towards uh, asymmetry being larger in the dominant kicking leg. So if we look at this, if we look at piriformis as having a role as um, in restraining excessive axial internal rotation of the hip to provide for um, optimal hip joint loading and positioning, we can suggest that piriformis has a role in hip joint protection in single leg, stance, ex single leg stance activities. And the hypertrophy and asymmetrical trend may be a positive muscle adaptation in elite footballers. What we did next was we broke it down further and looked at whether each player had low back pain or sustained a low limb injury. And what we found was that all the groups, so whether they had injury or not, or low back pain or not, the piriformis muscle size did increase throughout the season. However, the group with no low back pain and no low, no low limb injury had the greatest increase in the piriformis muscle size. So as you can see on the bar graph, compared to the other groups. Um, so this would suggest that the presence of low back pain or low limb injury has an effect on the ability of the piriformis muscle to adapt um, in size in response to physical demands. So these findings are similar um, to a number of other studies where they look at weak hip external rotators and reduced trunk control and correlations with increased um, risk of knee injuries. So these all suggest that there's a link between lumbar pelvic stability and lower limb stability. However, most of all these studies look at the superficial gluteal muscles um, rather than looking at the deeper hip and pelvic muscles, which um, this is the first to do and looking at elite footballers using MRI. So further research examining piriformis in single leg stance activities is needed to establish the clinical significance of piriformis hypertrophy and possible prevention of low back pain and lower limb injuries. So just in summary, so I guess what we're saying here is that piriformis may have a role in hip joint function in single leg stance activities, that the presence of low back pain and low limb injuries may have an effect on the ability of the piriformis to adapt in response to physical demands, and that the entire lower con 
extremity works as a continuous kinetic chain where a compromise in one joint may lead to a dysfunction in a proximal or distal joint. So I'd just like to thank um, the Brisbane Lions and the UQ Centre for Advanced Imaging.